Picture this, it's late winter in South Australia and you're stargazing. You look up and see something, a line of debris moving much slower than most meteors. This is something unique, what scientists call a mini moon. The explosion seen here, which happened in 2016, is one of the first of its kind to be observed. We're a new channel covering academic studies. Subscribe to join us. So what's a mini moon? Well, like the name sounds, they're objects gravitationally captured by the Earth-Moon system. Astronomers theorize they enter Earth's orbit for a few rotations, maybe more, before returning to orbit the Sun. For nearly 100 years, astronomers theorized they existed. And the first one was finally observed by telescopes in 2006. It was just a few meters wide and circled us for 11 months before escaping. Now, new findings published in the Astronomical Journal suggest cameras above Australia found another one. Three years ago, a slow-moving fireball entered the atmosphere at 11 kilometers per second, slower than most other meteors. It looks to have exploded over South Australia, though it's possible a piece survived impact. What matters is that astronomers studied its flight path and determined it entered the atmosphere at an angle suggesting it had been circling the Earth. How did it get here? And are there other mini-moons? To answer that, we must look at some older research. Scientists in 2012 found 0.1% of all meteorites hitting Earth should have been mini-moons. It's also suggested capture of these objects occurs mainly at Lagrange points L1 and L2. These are spots in space where gravitational forces of the Sun and Earth are enhanced. Celestial mechanics tells us there are five special points where a small object can orbit in a constant pattern with two larger masses. The SOHO satellite is in L1, while the James Webb Space Telescope will go in L2. L2 is ideal for our instruments because a craft is close enough to communicate with NASA and can also keep the sun behind to power itself, while having a clear view of deep space. Scientists are still trying to figure out why, but it appears that many moons are more likely to enter Earth orbit at these points. Why does it matter? Well, for one, they're an obvious first step for asteroid mining companies. The one kilometer wide near-Earth object Ryugu containing nickel, iron, and cobalt is worth approximately $83 billion. Though many moons are smaller, they can still eclipse seven or eight figures in value. And since they move slowly in orbit, miners can hop between them to strip them of resources, making such an operation more profitable than venturing out to a lone asteroid isolated in deep space. Many moons also have scientific potential. If cataloging them allows us to update lunar cratering estimates, for example, it could change our understanding of the early solar system. And there are other potential benefits as well. They'll allow us to practice asteroid redirect missions in case we ever need to nudge a hazardous object out of a collision course with Earth. So let us know if you can think of any other benefits for many moons. Greater public interest may impact how seriously future missions study them. Share with a friend who loves learning about science and hit the notification bell if you haven't. It really helps us out. See you next time.